When April showers come your way, they bring the flowers that bloom in May. Hello, I'm Alan Gray. Welcome to Get Gardening. Well, it's a showery old April day out here, but look at this wonderful cheery bouquet of blossom I've got in this pot. They say that when April showers come your way, they bring the flowers that bloom in May, but they also bring the flowers that bloom in April. And here we have a pot absolutely chock-a-block full of hyacinths. But there's not just hyacinths in here, because you can see through the top we've got tulips coming as well. You may remember that when we planted these tulips, we did three layers, one, two, three very deep into the pot and that's early mid-season and late season that means we get three seasons of tulips three lots of bloom each bloom lasting about two weeks which total six weeks see i can even add up <laughs> these are the first of those tulips beautiful pink edge creamy variety um, strange thing about this is that pink will actually increase in this petal so the, pet the whole petal becomes pink but if we look down in the middle here Looking between the hyacinths, if we pull them apart gently, we can see further tulips coming way down here. Um, some of them are barely through the earth at the moment. The hyacinths, by the way, this purple variety is Woodstock and the red one is Jan Boss. Lots of people would be frightened of putting those two colours together, but you know me, I just don't care. These polyanthus in this trough trough here are a lovely shade of kind of old parchmenty colours. They're an antique mixture and they've all got reasonably dark foliage um, with some stainings of beetroot on them. They're lovely, they're nostalgic plants, especially for me because these were my grandmother's favourite or one of my grandmother's favourite plants. But she had them in much brighter colours than this, but I just love this old mix. Um, I think they make an absolutely wonderful pot subject for the, for the early spring because even at this fairly late stage, if we look here, you've got flower buds still coming. So once the, the big flower heads go over, we pull those off and then these little ones take over. You know, putting plants in pots makes them look much more important than they would normally look. Take, for instance, the humble forget-me-not. This is what you'll buy from the garden centre at this time of the year. Just coming into flower, but in a horrible plastic pot. Doesn't look anything at all, does it? But look how nice it looks in an old terracotta pot. That looks beautiful. And that's going to take its place on a stand further into the garden. I'll, t I'll take you there before we go. I've also potted up some wallflowers that I've had growing in plastic pots, put them into terracotta pots. They look important. They look so much nicer. Why do I use wallflowers? For one reason, and that's scent alone. There is nothing like the scent of wallflowers. It's evocative of old cottage gardens from years ago, and it's absolutely stunning. I went to the garden centre today, and this is what I found. Some trays of pansies, I suppose you'd call them, wouldn't you? Ponce, um, pinks, and here we have some lavenders. Lovely things. But these were half price. The reason they're half price is because it's getting towards the end of their season. But it's not, you know, because if I go carefully over these and remove their spent flowers, any that are over, so that the plant doesn't waste energy setting seed, take any little dead bits out. If I turn it out of its pot, tiny little pot, look at that, absolutely full of roots. Now pansies like this will keep blooming probably until July. So you can actually do the same thing again. You can go to the garden centre at the end of the summer bedding season in late June or early July and you buy half price plants to replace your half price pansies. How's that for good value? Now I've got a general purpose potting compost here. Um, I'm going to put them into, the, into that. You can see it's absolutely full of root, the root ball. And that's absolutely wonderful. A little tip when you're planting, don't plant these dry. Make sure they're well watered and they're really wet. If necessary, put the whole tray or the whole pot in a tray of water and leave them for about half an hour. Take them out, let them drain for half an hour and then pot them. Because ideally you want water all the way through that root ball. If you get a dry centre to it, it's very, very difficult to re-wet. So these, these are nice and moist, so I'm going to put them in there. And don't be afraid of getting hold of the plant like that. It's not going to 
It's not that fragile, actually. It's not going to die, and you're not going to hurt it, so don't worry. Now, just put the plant, put your soil around the edge, poke it down with two fingers, give the plant a tap. That makes sure, makes sure that everything is settled. And what you want to have, if you can look in here, you want to have the, the soil depth below the rim of the pot so that when you water it, you get that level of water going right the way throughout the compost. Well, here we have a couple of stands and here's my wallflowers. I've got lemon wallflowers, I've got orange wallflowers and I've got the odd purple one as well. And if you just look at these for a moment, just look at that wonderfully bushy plant. Look at all those flower buds. So we've got all that to look forward to. And this, oh, it's redolent of my childhood. It's just so beautiful. I'm going to try something with these when they're finished. In a, an effort to become parsimonious. Can you imagine me, parsimonious? Well, when these flowers are finished, I'm going to chop the seed heads off and I'm going to plant those in the garden in a fairly sunny spot and hope that they'll do another year. I've done it before. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. It depends on how tough next winter's going to be. If it's anything like last winter, I'm onto a surefire winner. Now let's dress this with these little pots of forget-me-nots. Again, redolent of spring. And a few pots of pansies here too. Absolutely beautiful. And what I'm going to add is one more thing. And this is something that I gather from nature. And it looks absolutely lovely. And it's a few pine cones. These are they. They're big, but they're the pine cone from the Monterey pine. It's a big tree that comes from the coast of California. It's a fast growing tree. It's a beautiful tree. And it gives us these lovely pine cones. And all we do is we lay a few of those on the front of our pots to complete the decoration. As good as anything you'll see in a glossy mag, eh? Hey. And then the medium sutton. Come closer and have a look. Look at these, we've got... Ooh. <laughs>